Hey, what's up guys? Danny here. I wanted to quickly hype you guys up about what's happening this summer for our student ministry. From July 29th through August 1st, we're taking our students to Birmingham, Alabama for a student conference called Motion Conference. I promise you, your student is not going to want to miss it, but we're already filling up and we only have five spots left. Each ticket costs $250. And guys, it's going to be an incredible experience. Thousands of middle school, high school, and college age students from all around the state, all around the country, all around the world, worshiping God in one place. It's, it's where I experienced God for the first time. You're not going to want to miss this. See you guys there. you guys are here today in the house of God. We're packing it out every service, y'all. What's up? What's up, man? People are coming. People are coming. And and they're coming not because of us. They're becoming they're coming because of what God's doing inside of us. And so we're in this series called Stories and we've been sharing our stories. Different staff members been getting up here letting you know just who we are. How did we come to this journey of faith with God? Um, everybody here is on a journey. Everybody's on a journey, and maybe you started your journey with God really early in life. Um, maybe you've yet to start your journey with God. Wherever you're at in that timeline, I just want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, yeah. and he has you here today. Listen, he has you here today on purpose for a purpose, right? On purpose for a purpose. So there's some good stuff getting ready to come. I'm here with Pastor Shelby. Shelby, what do you do here at Rev Church? Yes, um, I am the children's pastor here. So I <laughs> oversee, yeah. I love what I get to do. Children's ministry is the best ministry. Um, but I help oversee <laughs> the birth through fifth grade classrooms. Um, and if you would have told me three years ago that I would be in ministry or I would be a pastor, I would have said that you were lying. <laughs> like, honestly, I probably wouldn't have even recognized myself today if I could have seen, you know, myself from three years ago, so. Absolutely, so, so it's funny interviewing Shelby because our story, we'll be interviewing next week. Me and my wife will be up here, you'll hear our story. And our story is the exact opposite, pretty much, of Shelby's story, uh, which makes it, it makes it fun, right? Because I think I grew up in church, around church my entire life, and literally my, uh, my mom was pregnant with me, and I think I might have been born in the baptistry. Like, I'm not even lying. Like, I've been in church my entire life. Uh, but Shelby, that's not your story at all. So, no. so I want to go back to, like, young Shelby. Y'all see the show Young Shelton? Young Shelton, right? Y'all seen that? What is young Shelby like? Who are you? Church yes. background. So just like Pastor Randy was saying, our stories are the exact opposite. I was not born in the baptistry <laughs> at all. Um, I actually had zero church background. My family is what you would call the Creasters. Creasters. The, the Christmas and Easter Christians. Christmas so and Easter. We would only come on Christmas and Easter. I, I call them the CEOs, Christmas and Easter only. Yeah. Right? Christmas and Easter, <laughs> CEOs. I don't know. <laughs> that was us. Um, and even when we were going to church, everything was right over our head. Like we would get in the car and be like, why are they raising their hands? Like, what did that even mean? And my parents are here. So my dad would say he could have understood, understood a little bit, but me and my mom would be like, what even did the pastor say? What just happened there? Um, so we were not church people at all. Actually, 
Um, I played soccer growing up, and I was, uh, my team was a D1 team, so basically our whole life revolved around soccer. It was like Mondays we had practice, Tuesdays was training, Wednesdays was practice. On the weekends, we would go out of town and go to some tournament. Sundays, we had games. It was like soccer all the time. There was not even time for church if we wanted to, um, like even go at all. Like we didn't have time because that took all of our time. We were there 24-7. Now, let me just pause right here. There's some, there's some people in the room today, and you go, okay, well, you know, that's not my story. I didn't play soccer, and it all consumed me. Can I just relate this to us today? Let's make it relatable, okay? Because there's some people in the room today that, that there are some things that take all of your time. It takes all of your energy. It takes majority of your resources. Most of your focus and dedication goes towards those things. Those things cannot even necessarily be bad things, but they can become what, what I would call an idol in our life, an idol in our life. And the Bible clearly tells us that, you know, we should have no other gods before Jesus. That's one of the 10 commandments. So if you're brand new to church, you're like, dude, I don't know anything. Well, let me teach you one of the 10 commandments. He says, thou shalt not have any other gods before me that we reverence him as number one. So this is kind of the life you were living though. Tell us more. Yeah, so soccer was everything um, we played all the time, elementary school, middle school, like those were basically all of my memories was soccer and playing <laughs> soccer. Um, and then I remember my junior year of high school, um, something changed. I tore my ACL so I couldn't play anymore, yeah. Um, and that just put a stop on things. Um, and I was still going to practice and I had to go to the games, but I didn't have to play. Hold on just a second. Guys, can I just say that, that God does, God does have a way of getting our attention. Yeah. He does. And if he hasn't yet, he, he most likely will, right? If he hasn't yet, he most likely will. Because at the end of the day, all of us are here to be making a difference in this community, to be the Christians and the people that God has called us to be, to take our next steps to grow in our faith spiritually. And some of us are just really weak. We, these, you know, these muscles we have, we haven't flexed them ever. We have never flexed these muscles. So we, since we haven't flexed them, there's not a lot going on there. But we have to grow in these different things because this is what God has for our lives. God has a purpose and a plan, but we'll miss it if we're not careful. So he got your attention through a torn meniscus. For you, it might be the loss of a job. For you, it might be the loss of a marriage. Maybe it's a child that doesn't wanna talk to you anymore. You know, these different things that happen to us, we have to understand that God has a way of really getting our attention. We go, man, what happened here? Why, why is this happening? And oftentimes we tend to do this. We go, you know, I haven't done anything for God up to this point. I've not even really thought about God, but now I'm gonna blame God. It's his fault that I'm in the situation that I'm in. Hello, somebody. That couldn't be farther from the truth though. The reason we're in the situation we're in is likely we haven't taken any next steps or made the effort. So. You, you tear your meniscus, yeah. that's not good, but you're allowed to go to the, the practices. What are you doing at the practices? Yes, yeah, so I was just sitting there. I wasn't really doing anything at the practices. Um, and soccer was really the thing that kind of held me down. Um, since I didn't have a relationship with Jesus, we didn't go to church. Um, it, it kept me on schedule, on track. I was doing something at least. Uh, but then when I stopped playing, I kind of lost my purpose. Um, and I, I couldn't play, like I said, so I kind of got off track, um, and I started getting into this party scene, um, and it didn't matter if I showed up to the games hungover because I wasn't playing anyway, <laughs> so there was nothing holding me down anymore saying um, I need to stay on track and, you know, not, not go off into this party scene. Um, and I remember that I would go, and I would go to these parties on Friday night, and then I would come to the games on Saturday morning, and I would tell my teammates about what happened at the party, and they would look at me and be like, wow, Shelby, you're so cool, like, that's <laughs> awesome, because none of them were doing that either, because soccer literally was the whole team, like, that was our life. Um, so. I, I felt cool because I was like, oh, I get to tell them all these stories about what's happening. Um, they, they think I'm cool. And, and at school, I'm getting to hang out with the popular kids because they're the ones that are drinking and they're partying and they're going out. So I just, I get this sense of like pride almost that I, I'm gaining popularity. I'm gaining this confidence. Can I, can I just say on here that 
Dude, how many of y'all like reality TV? Would you throw your hands in the air, reality TV? I know it's been around for a little while now. I like reality TV. But part of the reason why we like reality TV is because we're like, we would never do what that person's doing, but we certainly like watching and hearing the stories about it, right? It's like, oh, what's gonna happen next? Oh, it's probably not gonna land right, but, but let's just keep listening to see what happens next. And so, you know, I can't imagine that you stayed kind of down that path because you were gaining some popularity. That sounded great, yeah. but because there's always a but at the end of the, you know, there's, there's the story done in there, so tell me more. Yeah, so I kept going um, through the rest of high school um, into college. I, um, whenever I was looking for schools, I Googled schools closest to the beach, um, and I landed on San Diego State University. Um, so I went off to college. Right, real quick, that is not a prerequisite to finding your school. So all you teens and young adults getting ready to go, like, oh, I got to do that. That's, she's not telling you to do that, all right? This is just what she did. Yes. Um, so I went and did that. Um, and I felt really lonely because I didn't have those people that I was partying with and I was hanging out with all the time. Um, I didn't have access to the same drugs that I was using before. Um, so I just felt really lonely and I ended up uh, leaving school and coming back home and just getting right back into that scene um, around the same people who were still doing the same things. They hadn't even thought about college. Um, and we just continued down that path um, for a really long time, honestly. Um, and then I kind of, I didn't see an issue with it. You know, it was just the normal. It was what mm. everyone was doing. And students, I just, I want to speak to you. What everyone else is doing probably isn't what you should be doing. <laughs> do the exact opposite. Yeah. Do the exact, I can guarantee you do the exact opposite. Let me say this too. Normal is a weird word. It's just a weird, normal is weird, right? Isn't that awesome how I just did that? Normal is weird. Here's why it's weird, because normal is however you were raised, however you were brought up. That's normal to you, but to the guy sitting next to you, that's not normal at all. Let me play it out a little bit differently. Um, for you, you were saying like, normal is, hey, we always did this. This is just what we did. You know, I'm a junior, I'm a senior, this is what we do. Drugs, alcohol, partying, this is, this is the life, right? For somebody in the room, let me connect it differently. Maybe that's not you, but perhaps if you were verbally abused growing up or even physically abused growing up, can I just be honest? In your mind, that's normal to you. What do you mean that's not normal? Yeah, it's normal to you, and I'm saying, dude, that's not supposed to be that way. That's not normal. Normal is however you were raised. So you go, well, I always thought it was supposed to be done like this because my dad always did it this way or my mom always did it this way. This is normal. This is okay. Just because something is normalized doesn't mean it's okay at all for us. This is why God gave us his word, the Bible. He gave us his word to be a, a, a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path to help us see clearly what we don't know, even about our own human self. So you're coming back into the scene, you're normalizing it, it's like, oh, this is no big deal, then what happens? Mm -hmm. So the crowd I was hanging around wasn't the best people, obviously, <laughs> um, and I started dating this guy that was selling drugs, um, and we just, it's every single day. There was nothing, there was no purpose in our life. There was nothing to live for. Um, so we were just drinking, we were partying every single day of the week. Um, after leaving college, I had gotten a job. Um, at the time, I, I, I thought I wanted to be a teacher, so I had gotten a job working in an after-school care, um, and I was at a really bad place in my life, and I was going to work drunk um, more often than not. Um, and it wasn't the first time that I went to work drunk, but it was the first time that my boss caught me. Um, I ended up getting fired from that job, um, and I didn't want to go back home to my parents. So me and the guy that I was dating and all of our friends went to a hotel, and we went to stay at a hotel for a few days um, just to kind of get away. There was nothing to do. There was no job. We, we literally had nothing to live for. So we were just partying at this hotel, um, and one night after a few days of being there, the cops come, um, and I said that everything in the hotel was mine, um, and I ended up taking the blame for everything, and I got arrested that night, so. Let me just talk to y'all for a second, because there's some people here, you know, 
Man, th- your story is such a powerful story because there's so many different angles to it. And I know it's gonna speak to lots of people today, but as we, as we process kind of what you just heard, you might be living this exact same way. You might be living this exact same way, thinking, you know, like, hey, it's okay for me to like get high and to smoke weed and to, you know, shoot up and to get drunk and then to go work with kids. I don't know why you wanted to go work with kids, but, but she likes kids, right? She likes kids, she's like, but to her it was like, well, that, what's the problem, right? What's the problem with that? And oftentimes when we're living honestly in a, in a way that's displeasing to the Lord, we always try to justify the behavior. We try to justify the behavior in, in a way that makes it sound like, well, it'll be okay, or I'm okay, or you know, I'm not that high, or I'm not that, I haven't had that many drinks, you know? And we try to justify that. And guys, let me just tell you, when we're living that lifestyle, heading that pathway, it's always gonna end poorly, always. For you, you took the whole rap for something. Can I just tell you, there's somebody here that you're in a relationship with somebody that's telling you that they love you, right? They're telling you that they love you, that, that you would go, oh, because I love them, I'll take the rap for all of this. I'll take the blame. Can we just be clear and say that perhaps God's way of getting a hold of that person is not for you to step in and be the savior, but for him to step in and be the savior. If there's no consequence for the action, they don't feel any pain. If there's no pain felt, what happens, Shelby? Uh, trouble. <laughs> trouble, trouble. So, so, so you get arrested that day, then what? So you would think that would have been like my big wake up call, but it really wasn't. Um, my parents ended up bailing me out of jail. I only stayed there for like a night. So it wasn't a huge deal. The only thing that changed was, I was like, I better go get a job before this thing gets on my record. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, I like working with kids, so you can't have, you know, a charge on your record and work with kids. Um, So I was Googling like babysitting jobs, anything there was applying for everything. Um, And that's when there was a job for childcare childcare help on Sundays at Revolution Church. Yeah! (laughs) Let's go! Come on, somebody. (laughs) So I put on the face. I made it seem like I had myself put together. Um, I came into this interview, and it worked. I ended up getting a job (laughs) here. (laughs) It's not hard to fool me, bro. It's not hard. (laughs) And like I said, I knew nothing about God, had never opened a Bible in my life. Um, So if you're you're my friend, I've probably told you this story, but I have to tell it again. Um, When I first started, it was around Easter time, and the children's pastor at the time said, "Um, can you please teach the Bible story today? And I was like, oh yeah, I got this. I'm great with kids, you know? Um, So I I start off and I'm like, hey kids, aren't you so excited? Easter's coming up, it's Jesus's birthday. (laughs) Hold on, For, for the young Shelby's in the room, Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus after he died, okay? <laughs> Christmas is his birthday, okay? Just, just making it make sense. I think that tells you that like <laughs> even going to church on Christmas and Easter wasn't working. Um, <laughs> but I went home to my mom that night and I was like, mom, how come you never took me to church? Like, how come I didn't know this? And my mom sat there and she said, is Christmas not, or is Easter not Jesus's birthday? <laughs> yes. Like, she it. didn't even know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, so that kind of tells you where <laughs> I was in my walk. I knew nothing about God. Um, and as I started coming. Um, uh, real quick, I don't want to miss that second right there. There's a lot of people, you heard that, and you automatically go, oh, that's me, and I'm out of place. If I, I'm not going to ask people to raise their hands because they're not going to be honest, and I don't want you to have to lie in church. But majority of the people in the room, that's exactly where they sit. Right. So nobody should feel out of place right here. Nobody should feel like I don't belong because I should know more than that. No, no. Mm-hmm. Get, that's a lie from the enemy, yeah. okay? Again, you're here on purpose for a purpose. God has something he's trying to communicate today, and you belong here. You belong. You belong. So I started coming and working here on Sundays Um, And like I said, getting arrested wasn't really a wake-up call for me. (laughs) So I was coming on Sundays, and I was um, working back in the children's area. um, 
But Monday through Saturday, I was still doing my own thing, living that same lifestyle, hanging out with the same people. Um, it was just a Sunday thing. And that lasted for about a year that I was coming and I was putting on this face, but I was somebody completely different Monday through Saturday. Most people in the room, and, and, and not just in this environment, but churches across the United States, I would argue, and I would make a great argument, that 95% of attendees aren't participants. Yeah. They never get past the understanding that it's not just show up and leave, that God has so much more for you. That when you take those next steps, you begin to walk with God. You experience not just what we do, but the presence of God. Like to truly know God. Uh, I love our little slogan here, our like taglines, you know, know God. We want to help you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose so you can make a difference. That's the four things that you're going to get when you come to Rev Church, okay? Let me say them again real quick. We're going to help you know God. Find freedom in your life because you got a lot of baggage you've been carrying and we're gonna help release all that off of you so that way you can be who God wants you to be. Discover your purpose. What did God create you to do so that you can make a difference? And so Shelby, you kind of get going on the pathway, but you're, you're, you're here, but you haven't really gone all in. You're, you're like ankle deep, right? right yeah. You're ankle deep in the water. And without even realizing, God was really working on me and he was working on my heart um, and especially in the children's ministry, um, I would get these lessons that I would teach. Um, and I was supposed to be teaching them to the kids, but really I was learning myself. Hello. And God was working on me through that. Yeah. So, I mean, he was, he was doing something inside of me without me even realizing it. Shameless plug for children's ministry. Let me say it like this. If you want to learn the Bible, okay, and you need it in fun bite-sized pieces... Children's ministry is the right group yes. for you, all right? Y'all need to sign up today, today. Shameless, hey, there's no shame in that game. I'd rather you learn the Bible. People, people, oh, pastor, which version of the Bible is the best version of the Bible? The one you read, bro. I don't care which version you choose. You can have the right version and not read it and don't do anything for you. So, yeah, get in, dig in. So, so, you so God's working on me um, through this time, and I don't even realize it. Um, and people are asking me, they're like, come to service with me, because I wasn't going to service at all. I was just sticking back in the children's ministry. Um, I didn't want to go. I felt uncomfortable lifting my hands. I felt uncomfortable in the, in the environment. I was like, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to do that. Um, and probably, like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I got asked a hundred times to go to church, <laughs> and I said no. Um, and then finally... After the hundred the hundredth time, I decided to say yes. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you've been inviting someone to church and they've been saying no, just keep asking. Cause because that there next time go. could be their yes. That's right. Wow. So you come in. Yes. So I, I attend a service and I remember it so clearly. Uh, Pastor Randy, your message was about getting rid of stuff at your house. So he was like, go and get rid of 500 things in your house. Y'all got too much junk in your life. Yeah. Go get rid of 500 things right now. Yeah. And something about that like really, really touched my heart. And I, I went home that day and I was clearing out my house. Um, but really God was showing me something else through that message. Not only did I need to get rid of stuff in my house, but there were some friendships that I needed to get rid of and I needed to cut off. So, and that, that's hard to do though. Yeah. Talk more, talk more, talk more. So that day I ended up um, changing my phone number. I moved to a different apartment where no one would be able to find me. Um, and I just stepped back from all of those friendships and it was lonely. Like that mm. was a hard time. It would have been so easy to just go back to that same life and go back and hang out with those same friends instead of being lonely. But I knew that God had more for me and there was something more for me. So I, I stepped out of that and I, I kept hearing small groups, get in a group, get in a group. <laughs> I heard it over and over. Yep. Um, and I went and I got in a young adult group. And that's kind of really where God did the most in me. Um, and at first, if you were in that young adult group with me, I did not say a single word. I didn't talk to anyone. Like, my mask was on. I didn't want anyone to know anything about me. Um, and 
And that, my life couldn't change that way. There was no way I was gonna build real connections with Christians if my mask was up. Mm. So these people here are so amazing. Kendall Wood, Sarah Inslee, Jenny Martin. They kept inviting me. They're like, we, yeah. yeah. They kept inviting me out. They're like, let's go get coffee. Like, let's hang out. Um, and finally, I just started to open up to them and get real with them. And that's really where my life changed, when I got real with people and started to build those real connections in the church. Let me just say this, guys. You are the average, you are the average of the top five people that you spend time with. Yeah. You're the average sum total of whoever they are. Mm -hmm. So if you hang out with some uh, no good, low down, negative, critical, gossipy, whatever, whatever, you fill in the blank, you're the average of those top five people you spend time with. Mm -hmm. It's probably time to spend some time with some different type of people, yeah. honestly, yeah. honestly. And it is gonna be uncomfortable at first. You know why? Because you're gonna feel like you're out of place. And for a brief moment, you will be that way. You'll be like, dude, I don't know nothing. <laughs> God doesn't wanna teach you the whole Bible in one day. He's never told you... There's never a Bible character where it's like, and then he downloaded the whole Bible into his brain so that way he could be who he was supposed to be. No, it's he took a step towards Jesus, whatever that faith step was, and God gave him exactly what he needed just in that moment, for that day, for that period of time. Yeah. You know, what I know today is not what I knew a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. It's been these slow little deposits that God begins to make in my life when I put myself in the right environment. When I make myself available to God, he's so available to us. So the question I have, I wanna hammer it again. Teenagers, young adults, old adults, everybody, right? Everybody, listen to me. Who do you need to disconnect from in your life? And here's the pushback, Shelby. They go, well, the, you know, would Jesus do that? Would Jesus, well, what would Jesus do? I don't know what he would do all the way exactly because he's God and I'm not, but I know he's God and you're not too. Right, you're not God. So what he would do and what you would do might be two totally different things, because he's God. He can sustain being around all that nasty environment. So I always hear the argument, well, I'll just go be in the environment. Jesus would want us to da 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 da. Jesus, listen, you can love people, but love them from a distance, okay? Sometimes the, the healthiest thing for you to do in your life is to disconnect those relationships. And to get, if you're really concerned about those people, why don't you just pray for them? Pray for them. Like, prayer's free. <laughs> <laughs> prayer's free, baby. I'm gonna preach that message one day. Prayer's free. You'll be preaching that message one day. How about that? Prayer's free. You pray for them, man. So what else? What else? Tell so us what I happens. just wanna add on that same note that when I disconnected from these people, they didn't reach out to me. They didn't try to contact me because they really weren't my friends to begin with. The only thing we had in common was drinking together and partying together. We weren't really as close of friends as I thought we were. This is where we just sit silent for a few seconds. <laughs> it's like the right answer. Ding. I love God. Is God not cool or what? Is that not cool or what? That seven seconds felt like, like an eternity for somebody in here, like, I got bad friends, I need to stop it. You know, Ta ding <laughs> Keep going, Shelby, tell us more. Um, so I remember in that young adult group, when God started to work in my heart, I remember uh, we did like video worship, and I remember lifting my hands for the first time. And I remember being like, I need to go get a Bible and read the word for myself. I need to start having a Monday through Saturday relationship with Jesus, not just a Sunday relationship. Come on now. And God was really working in my heart. But it took me cutting off those ties, and it took me getting vulnerable, opening up, getting in a group. And I, I just, I had, a, I had a moment where I was like, I was still getting paid for this because I got hired as a child care worker. And I was like, I don't even need to get paid for this anymore. I need to start serving God with my time. Like, the, yeah. We can share. The $60 a weekend wasn't even <laughs> worth it. 
Hey, y'all, that's all we had, bro. That's all we had. Y'all, y'all better give and start tithing. Come on now. Come on now. But God was working on me. Um, and I just, it started just with my toes in. I was just putting my toes in. And then I began to get deeper and put my legs in, you know, put my full body in until I was really all in, submerged in the things of God. Mm. And when that happened, God was just opening doors for me, and uh, I became a team leader on the, on the children's ministry team, and I, I began not only to lead the kids, but also to lead adults. And God just continued to open these doors little by little for me. Um, and then about a year ago, um, the, the children's pastor position opens up, and I had been all in for about a year at this time, maybe a year and a half, I had gotten baptized, I was doing everything, um, and God just opened this door for the children's pastor position. And I was like, I don't know if this is for me, I don't know if you want me to do this, I'm just gonna sit back and let God lead the way. And he really did, and I'm just Amen. so grateful for where I am today. Hey, real quick, real quick, I wanna, hold on, hold it, hold it. Get loud when I say it though, okay? Hold it, save it, save it, save it. It's in the pocket, it's ready to, oh, you're ready to give it. I want to honor Pastor Shelby because for me, it's an honor. I always feel like a, like a spiritual father when I'm in this place, right? A spiritual father. Um, whether you're older than me, younger than me, same age as me, it don't matter. I feel like a spiritual father in this house. My, my job is to help you become who God created you to be, help you to see what the Bible says and be able to take those next steps to grow in your relationship. And I got to experience the entire journey of her coming into Rev. Uh, and, and, and really taking those steps of growth. And whenever you're a spiritual father and you get to see a daughter come along that just, man, she, you, you kill it, you kill it. Hold on, hold, save it, save it. Not ready yet, not ready yet. Listen, I told, I told Shelby, I said, Shelby, when you take this job as, as the children's pastor, this is, and this is heavy, this is heavy words, what I was telling her, I said, I'm giving you control of my most prized possession. For those of you that don't know, I have five children. My basketball team, right? Working on it, okay? I got five of them. And I was like, Shelby, I'm giving you this piece of my life. Nothing is more important to me than this. Will you, if I give you this responsibility, will you steward them well? And I can tell you that Shelby, you've done a phenomenal job. Thank you so much for investing. Amen. <laughs> they saved it. <laughs> they saved it. Next time I want to see some jumping up and down. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Here's the deal though. I, I celebrate today. Last week was promotion Sunday. So the little guys who are children, they promote up to the youth ministry, right? In the youth ministry, they graduate to become adults. Um, my son, JJ, he's been with you this entire journey. And the things he knows today isn't just because of what I've poured into him, it's what you guys have poured in and the investment that you make into his life. And I'm telling you, I watched my son today. He was a greeter at the front door. Uh, he prayed with people in our prayer teams today. And I didn't coach him on what to pray or how to pray it. He just is like, okay, that's the prayer, let's pray. All right? he knows how to pray. Can I just tell everybody in the room that if you want your kids to land that direction, it does not happen by accident. It's strategic. And it's, whether it's raining, snowing, hailing, good day out, bad day, I don't feel like getting out of bed, Dad. That's great, son, let's go, right? <laughs> let's go. You don't get a choice. Why? Because I want to make sure that you have these truths in your life. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. We teach our children these truths because it's super important for their life. I know, Shelby, this was something you said you didn't have. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more. I, I am passionate about this because I missed out on this as a kid, and I didn't get to experience this. Um, and what we do in our children's ministry, even from our nursery classroom, it's not just child care. Like, we are teaching these kids biblical truths that they will be able to take in their entire lives. 
like even as adults, mm -hmm. even in our nursery class, we read Bible stories. These kids are downloading it from right. babies. What we do is so important. I just want to encourage you guys, get your kids in our children's ministry. Bring them to Summer Blast. I think everybody had a postcard on their, on their chair today, and you were like, somebody sitting here? Well, I'm going to take their seat anyways. I don't care. I'm not moving, right? That Summer Blast postcard is for you, okay? So you to be reminded of the dates and the times. You got to get here. The, the scripture that I tell you and the things that just come out of my mouth, they came when I was a little kid. I learned them at that age, and they're just there. Boom, boom. They're just there. And now I've got all these tools available to me. So I can, you know, think about a guy in a, in a workshop. He's a carpenter. He's trying to build something or fix something. You know, the right tools make all the difference in the world. Hello, somebody. Can I get an amen? The right tools. You walk in there and you got to cut something. All you got is a screwdriver. You're going to be there a long time, right? The right tools matter. So, so, so having those tools in our kids' tool belt, and, and listen, it's going to be hard for them to get it if you don't have it. Hey, Dad, what's a saw look like? Well, if you know, know what a saw is, it's going to be hard to teach them what a saw is. You've got to sharpen up in these areas. You've got to develop some of this stuff that you don't have so you can pass this down from generation to generation. So we got Kids Conference coming up. Yes, our Summer Blast Kids Conference. Uh, we talked about it a little bit during the welcome, but I just want to uh, bring it up again. June 22nd through 24th, it's from 6 to 8 p.m. Make sure your kids are here. If you have friends that have kids, bring them, um, get them here. We want to have, I. my goal, my prayer is that we have over 200 kids here at our Summer Blast Come Kids on. Conference. I think, I think we will. I think we're blowing it out of the water. Uh, we had over 760 people sign up for a small group, by the way, which, which means, hold on, don't celebrate, which means this, which means this, okay? Like everybody and their brother has signed up for a group this time. So if you're in the room and you're like, I haven't signed up for a group, you're like one of the only ones that haven't signed up for a group. So that's a big, hello, what are you doing, bro? Come on, let's get our act together. Let's, let's take next steps, okay? Um, guys, as we get ready to kind of wrap this up and, and kind of wind down today, uh, really there's, there's a couple of areas of our life that I just want us to concentrate on for just a couple seconds. Concentrate on it. What idols have you made in your life that just prioritize your mind and, and overtake everything? What idols do you have? Where does your focus, your energy, your time, your money, your resources, where is all that going? And is it worth it really? Like if you achieve what you think it is, is it really worth it? What idols do we have? Uh, that's step one. Step two would be, let's think about the type of friendships and relationships that we carry today. Let's think of the people in our life. Are they really the right people for us? I'm not saying they're horrible people. Are they, just gonna, are they the people that are gonna lead us towards God or are they gonna more pull us away from God, right? That just comes down to, do we believe that God has a plan for our life and that it's a good plan and that if we'll trust him, that things will really be great for us? If we don't believe that, then yeah, just, you'll just keep doing what you're doing. But I'm here to tell you today that there's so much more. There's so much more than that lifestyle. There's some of you today that, you know, all you do is drink and all you do is all the stuff to numb yourself because you just don't want to think about the pain of all the issues going on in your life. And so you're just numbing yourself. That's all you're doing. You're, you're self-medicating. That's actually what you're doing. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus actually wants to give you joy he wants to give you peace. He wants to give you happiness. But that means you're gonna have to let go of some of these worldly things that honestly, um, I mentioned it early, that, that you've said, I'm gonna take this and use this as my God. I'm gonna count on this thing to give me what only God can really offer me. You're, 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 you're settling for a false substitute. And I know I'm in Texas. Hello, Texans, here we go. Um, Y'all y'all order a Coke and what you mean is a Dr. Pepper, right? Like y'all y'all like your Dr. Pepper up in here. Can you imagine if I offered you a, a Dr. Thunder instead of a Dr. Pepper? <laughs> That's not the same stuff at all. And so often we settle for the substitute in our lives. And yet Jesus is right here saying, I'm the real deal. And if you'll just have some faith to believe in me, I'll change your life. I'm gonna ask Pastor Danny to come up and close us out with your heads bowed and your eyes closed at this time. Pastor Danny, would you close us? Man, what a, what a powerful testimony. 
what a powerful time today and, and in church. Maybe you're right now on the other side of that testimony. And you're saying, man, that's me. <laughs> that's me, Pastor Danny. I'm, I'm, I'm still doing my own thing. I'm, I'm still living in a way that might not be pleasing to God. And you're like, ah, you know, how, how is God going to use me? How is God going to use that? The first step is starting a relationship with Jesus. Because if you want him to turn that mess into a message one day, that's the first step, is accepting Jesus as your, as your, we like to say, your personal Lord and Savior. Because he wants a personal relationship with you. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray a prayer of blessing over y'all. Father God, thank you so much for, for every single person under the sound of my voice here in person and watching online, God. Thank you for their individual stories, God. God, you, you knew. You're not surprised. God, and I'm praying right now that you'd use their stories. You'd use their testimonies and their trials and their hardships and the pain that they're going through right now, God, that you'd remind them that there's a purpose in what you're doing in their lives right now. Even if they don't understand, even if they don't, even if they don't want it to happen sometimes, you still have a plan, God. For those of you who who your hearts were, were moved by today's message. On the count of three, if you want to start a relationship with Jesus Christ today, no one's looking around. This is a personal decision. If you want to start a relationship with Jesus, on the count of three, just raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Lift them high. Lift them high. I see you. I see you right there. I see you on the front. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Wow. Hands going up everywhere. You can put your hands down. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, we give our lives to you today, Lord. God, today is the day that our lives are never going to be the same because we now have you in our hearts, Lord. In a moment, the tech team's going to put a prayer on the screen. We call this our invitation prayer. I want everyone to look up on the screen. This this is, this is the prayer that you pray to really accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So I want everyone in the room to repeat this after me. That way no one feels embarrassed or left out or uncomfortable. If you want to start a relationship, it's not, it's not even about getting all the words correct, but it's about you believing it really in your heart. So everyone repeat after me. Say, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for doing life my way. God, show me your way. Fill me with your spirit and guide me by your word. Make me who you created me to be. Amen. Put your hands together, family. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate. Hey, if you just recommitted your life to Christ or just gave your, gave your life to Christ for the very first time, that is the best decision. Hey, raise your hand if you know that's the best decision that you'll ever make in your life. Look around the room. Go, go talk to someone who's given their life to Christ. We want to celebrate with you. And the second thing that we want to do is there's this QR code on the screen. If you just made that decision, we want to walk with you. And we don't want you to be... Uh, in the, in the, in, we want you to be in the know, okay? We want, you to, we want you to know what are your next steps. Okay, I, you just made this decision. What now? What do I do now? And let me just go ahead and tell you, if you just made that decision, your very next step is water baptism. So every third Sunday of the month, we're water baptizing. But go ahead and scan this QR code. We love, love, love to help you take those next steps. But let's go ahead and say goodbye to our online family on the count of three. One, two, three. Goodbye. And now I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. I hope you all have the best Sunday of your life.